All right, hello AP Statistics. This is section 6.1, discrete and continuous random variables. Here's what you need. You need paper and pencil, of course, just like you normally do. You would also need a graphing calculator and you'll need from chapter two, your normal distribution table. All right, it's kind of like your, your Z table where if I gave you a Z score, you'd look that up and you'd find your respective four digit probability. You need that. If you don't have those handy right now, take a moment, go grab them, all right? and then come back and um, pause this while you go do that. All right, here's what I got. This is a table that describes the number of wins that ASU would have in football for a season, okay? And its respective probabilities for each of those potential wins, all right? These are called discrete numbers, okay? They are in this case, natural numbers because I can only have, for example, six wins or seven wins, eight wins. I cannot have a continuous number or a set of numbers that would satisfy, um, for example, one of these cells, okay? I can't have six and two thirds wins, et cetera. So here's what I'm gonna do. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at these, uh, these numbers within the table and decide if my, my table has a, um, a probability distribution that is legitimate, okay? And if you can remember from chapter five, which is the last chapter, Legitimate means that you take up all these proportions, okay, all these probabilities, and you have to add them up, okay? And if at the end they equal 1.00 or, okay, 100%, however you want to say it, then you'll say it's legitimate, okay? And if you take a moment and you add them all up, you'll find it works, okay? So as we verified, all you have to say is that the sum of all your p of x's does equal, okay, and we are good to go. Okay, I'm gonna move my picture down just a little bit. Second part, okay, says to create a bar graph for the probability distribution, okay, and, and this isn't too bad, this is pretty easy. And what does that mean? Well, I'm going to do my best on my tablet to draw horizontal line, with the straight edge, and then we'll draw a vertical line. And we'll count uh, going across here. We'll start with six wins. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then vertically, it goes as high as, for P of X, 25. So 25%, I'm gonna count by 0 0.05, or 5%, and then we'll estimate our bars as we draw them vertically. Okay, so for six, I'm gonna go up to 5%, that's about right here. For seven, that's 10%. Okay, that is 15%. Nine is 20%. 10. And 10 is 25%. Now, what I, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write in the percents on top just because sometimes it's difficult to tell vertically how high we're actually traveling. Okay, and I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna go up 15%. And then seven. And then two. And then one. All right, and I'm gonna call this, I'll point underneath because I ran out of uh, space underneath, but that's just number of ones. Okay, and I can elaborate if I want. And say number of wins by the ASU football team during a season, but for now that's okay. All right. All right, pretty elementary. I think that's pretty um, easy for most students to do, but don't forget to label both your vertical and horizontal axes. All right, let me move myself back up. And here's what I got. It says number of wins, of course, and then our P of X, and it says find part C, uh, the expected value. And you're like, what is that? 
Okay. Expected value is a, a vocabulary term that you're going to see quite often in this chapter. And, and, and ones after it, expected value is another uh, name for just an average. And you see the symbol right here, it says mu sub x, and, and that's what it is. It's just the average of um, all your x's here, okay? Now, most people look at that and say, well, if I'm just finding the average, don't I just add them all up and divide by n? In this case, it's nine. And, and in most cases, that's true, okay? However, if you look at your probability distribution, you'll notice that some of these number of wins somewhere between six and 14. Some of these representations are more likely than others. Okay, for example, if I look at 10 and I look at 14, okay, 14 only happens 1% of the time, okay? 10 happens 25% of the time. So what I wanna do is make sure that I weight these accordingly so that 10 is represented more often than what this 14 is, okay? I don't wanna count them as equals. And if you were to just add all these number of wins up and divide by nine, then you would be saying that all of these are equally weighted, which they are not, okay? I'll talk more about that in a second. But here's the formula. It's just x times p of x, which is right here. And what that means is you just gotta match up these, uh, these numbers for x and their respective probabilities and multiply them together. So six times 0.05 is 0.3. 7 times 0.1 is 0.7, and you could go across, okay, and then add them all up, but it gets kind of laborious, okay? It could be um, an easy opportunity to make a silly mistake, okay? So here's what I do. I'm going to print this off the far left. I'm going to call this L1 and L2, and while they're written horizontally, L1 and L2 will be um, represented vertically on my TI-84. Okay, and so that's what I have. I have all my L1s and L2s here. Pause me if you need to and put those in your graphing calculator just for the practice. Okay. And then once you have that, what we're going to do is we're actually going to multiply these lists together, kind of like a spreadsheet. Okay, and my L3 is going to be the product of the L1 and L2. Okay, and so as if you look over here, you can see that my L1 and L2s are still there. L3 is highlighted and I wrote the formula in L1 times L2. And you end up with these respective products. All right, so if I wanted to, I could keep going. It is often encouraged that you do this on your AP exam, though they don't usually have this many. Like you're not gonna have nine of them. There's usually like just three or four. And, and oftentimes you can do them in your head. You don't really need your graphing calculator. Okay, and then once you have all those products, you're gonna use this symbol, and if you don't remember what that sigma does, that is the summation sign. So you're going to sum everything in L3. So I've got one of our stats. Okay, that's the command that does nice work for us pretty quickly. Make sure you put an L3 behind it, not the L1. Okay, and again, it takes a second to do in your calculator, but you should end up with the screen. Okay, and if you need to pause me, certainly do that. Okay. And remember what I'm looking for. While I'm trying to find the sum of, um, sorry, the average or the expected value of um, this probability distribution, um, what I really want is the command for sum. Okay, this was the last step that I did. And there's your sum. So I'll say mu of x is 9.39. Okay, so what does that mean? It means in a season, on average, we expect Arizona State to have 9.39 wins. And there you go, okay? Now remember that with each mean, there is a standard deviation, okay? So let's work with that formula. It's the one that you see right here, okay? And we'll talk about that on the next screen. Okay, so standard deviation of our x. And what does this mean? Well, you're gonna take all of these little x values, okay? You're going to subtract the mean, which we just found, 9.39. Close your parentheses, square it, and then multiply by that result by all the respective L2s, or all the items in your L2, which is your, um, your probabilities, okay? So for example, if you were to do the first one, um, you'd be taking six minus 9.39, you would square it and multiply it by 0.05, okay? And then you do the second piece, seven minus 9.39, you would square it, multiply it by 
0.10. All right, and you keep doing that all the way to the very last one, which is um, 14 minus 9.39 squared times 0.01. Okay, and that's a lot of number crunching if you did that just by hand on your own, which again means that it is wise for maybe us, for us to use our graphing calculator. Okay, so we already have, and I don't know why I keep doing this. Oh, we already have, I do know why I keep doing this, this value, 9.39. That's what I want for my average. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do with my L4, Okay, is I'm going to take my L1s, which are my x's, subtract the mean, which we said was 9.39, okay, and square it, and then multiply it by all the items in your L2, okay, which are your p of x's. Okay, so this is the exact command that you do. The only thing that changes it from it, from problem to problem, is the mean that you got from the previous slide. Okay, so this mean will always change with each new problem, but this command um, is uh, is consistent. Okay. And here are the numbers that you would get for those, and I'm not going to write those all down. Okay, I just want you to see how we got them. You could do this in your calculator, this command, and know that those are the numbers you would get. And what are we going to do with these numbers? We're going to add them up. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is, again, TI-84, I'm going to go to um, stats and move over one to, to calc. And I'll do one variable statistics. And this is L4. Okay. And again, I don't want the mean. I'm going to scratch that out. I don't want the standard deviation of L4. I want the sum of L4, which is that guy. Okay, so what I can say is, I'm going to put this in the screen because I have a little bit more room. Um, that is really what's inside here. It's everything but your square root bar. Okay, so the square root bar is not, um, that operation has not been performed yet. And so what I can say is that this is the standard deviation of x squared is equal to 2.8979. Okay, and if you forgot what that was from a couple of chapters ago, that's actually the variance. Okay, and so now if you want the standard deviation, I'll just abbreviate that. That is sigma of x. If you square root this, square root both sides, you get 1.7, I think, oh. Let me check that to make sure. And it is 1.702. All right, now as they ask you to interpret that, what does this mean? Okay, well, what it means is, I'm gonna put this up in the top left-hand corner so you can read it. Okay. It means that on average, okay, um, the number of wins ASU have this season, Okay, it will vary by 1.70 to from the mean. Okay, so on average, the number, I abbreviated that average. Okay, the number of Wednesdays you will have in a season will vary by 1.702 from the mean. Okay. All right, so that is probably the toughest part, okay? It's the longest part, but again, you can do it all in your graphing calculator. Give me a good definition of what it means in the end in terms of interpretation and your sets, okay? All right, last piece is actually one of the easiest parts. I'll move my stuff out of the way temporarily here, okay? And we have number of wins and the respective probabilities, and this will surprise you for us kind of um, involved as the previous questions were, this one's pretty easy. So let's find the probability of having um, the number of wins being greater than eight, okay? Which means that, well, what would X be to make a true statement? It could be a nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, or 14. Okay, so I'll look at those. Those start here and they finish there. 
So you'll just add those up, 0.20 plus 0.25 plus 0.15 plus 0.07 plus 0.02 plus 0.01. Okay, and if you add those up, it gives you 0 0.70. So what does that mean? You have a 70% chance of um, having ASU win eight games, or sorry, more than eight games in a season. And if I said greater than or equal to eight, well, gosh, that is the same thing as having X is equal to eight plus the part we just did, okay, which is X is greater than eight. Okay, so um, eight or more, okay? And so we already know what the or more part is. This is 0.70. The X is greater, or sorry, X is equal to eight is 0.15. So that gives you 0.85. Someone asks, do I have to show the work? Yeah, I'll show this. It's easy. Okay, make sure that AP knows how you got your answer. Okay, so I know it's not hard work to do, but yeah, they wanna see what you did to get it. All right, now we can apply this question to something new, and this is a very popular type of question in statistics books. It's called the pick three lottery, and the state that I live in actually has it. Um, it's a $1 game, okay? And here's what happens. Uh, you pick three digits, zero through nine. They can repeat, okay? There are three drums of ping pong balls with zero through nine on it. One will be sectioned out of each one and a, a set of numbers will come up or yeah, a set of three numbers will come up. If your three numbers match the three numbers that come out of the ping pong drums, exactly, in an order, okay, then you win $500. Sounds awesome. Okay, so for example, if I pick the numbers 129, okay, if the first set of ping pong balls, which are numbers zero through nine, if the first one came up a one, that's a good start because that was the first ball that I chose. If in the second drum, they picked the two, which is what I have, and then the third drum was a nine, then again, I would win 500 bucks, okay? Now, here's what they're asking. They wanna know what is the expected value? Meaning if you were to play this game over and over and over again, week after week for years and years and years, how much would you expect to win on average, okay? Now, when I do this, okay, and there's a couple ways, I'll put my X here and my P of X here. And I'll ask myself, money, money wise, how can we finish? Okay, money always goes usually where the X is. Okay, and in this case, you're going to do one of two things. You're going to win nothing. Okay, because one of the three numbers or more will not match. Okay, or you're going to win five hundred dollars. Okay, now think about this. What is the probability of winning? Okay. If you have to be exact on your three numbers, what are the chances of winning? What is the probability? Well, if the first group, you have a one in 10 chance of winning that first number. And if you have a one in 10 chance for the second, and then a one in 10 chance for the third, well, what should I do with all these? Well, sure, I will multiply them together. And yeah, the chances of winning that $500 is one out of a thousand. Okay, and that would seem to make sense because the numbers that we have are, well, the lowest three digit number you could pick is zero, zero, zero. And the highest that you could pick is nine, nine, nine. And if only one work out of all the ones that you see here, yeah, zero, 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 and then zero, zero, one to nine, 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 that's 1000 numbers. Okay. Which means, what is the probability of losing? Pretty good, 999 out of 1,000. Okay, and then what do we do, of course? We will do x times p of x. All right, now, going across, this is pretty nice, because I just get a zero. And going across here, people are pretty good about doing the math, and you can do it on a calculator, but they'll get 500 over a thousand and if people say is that right i'll say yeah but what are we talking about here okay and what are we talking about well we're talking about wins okay wins with respect to what units well money okay so this is really zero dollars 
And this is really a half a dollar or 50 cents. Okay. And based off our formula, what did we do once we got our L3 done? Well, we did a one bar stance with L3 and we added these up. And we get 50 cents. And what does that mean? Well, okay, for many games played, for many pick three games played, okay, we can expect to win 50 cents, okay, for every one dollar spent okay to play the game okay so for every one dollar you, you you spend to play this game you expect on average to get a return of 50 cents okay now some people say is that the same thing as just saying you're losing on average 50 cents per game and yeah that's basically it Okay. Keep in mind that there's no guarantee that if you play this 1,000 times that you're going to get exactly one win. Okay. You have to play this over and over again, thousands and thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of times to say that, hey, on average, you're going to get a return of 50 cents for every dollar. Okay. All right. Now, is there a standard deviation to this? You bet there is. Okay. But let's do this with our graphing calculator. Okay. So here's the first part. There's our zero, there's our 500, there's the respective probabilities. This is what you get when you add them up, okay? And again, we said that our average for X was 50 cents. All right. Now, what am I gonna do next? Well, I'm gonna use the formula, and if you forgot it, I will remind you what it is. It's the little sigma of x is equal to the square roots of the sum of all of your x's minus the mean. Now the mean in this case is 50 cents squared times p of x. Okay, and as you look at that, you can see that that's what I put as a command in my L4. Okay, you get L1 minus 0.5 in parentheses squared times L2 Okay, and if you hit return, you get these numbers. Okay, and you can add them up doing a one var stats. Okay, or you could just, I'm just gonna put this underneath my root bar. I know that when I add them up, there's only two items. So it is 249 points, I'm gonna say 75. Okay, because that is pretty close. And if you do square root that, you get 15.803. All right, now what does that 15.803 mean? Okay, um, what we'll say, kind of like we've said in the past, and I'm gonna put this right up here, for many games, many pick three games played, okay, when I say many, we're looking at like hundreds of thousands, maybe millions, okay, okay, your payout, your average payout okay, for every $1 game played will vary by 15.803, meaning $15 in basically 80 cents. Okay. All right, if you kept this up, you added these up, Okay, again, that 249.75 is right there. We kind of did that in our head. There's no, nothing that says you have to always use a graphing calculator, but just keep in mind that that becomes helpful. All right, let's keep going. Now these are continuous random variables because I'm not dealing with the discrete, uh, for example, uh, numbers six through 14. When I look at a discrete random variable, sorry, continuous random variable, um, I'm looking at an interval, okay? And so here's what I got. I got this, looks like a rectangle, zero through five um, is my horizontal axis. And they don't tell me vertically how high it is, but here's what I'm gonna share. 
it says it is a density curve. And now, what is a density curve? Remember, a density curve has two characteristics. One, okay, um, your curve is above the horizontal axis. Okay, and two, the area underneath has to be one. Okay, so if you look at this, it does go from zero to five. They don't tell me the height, but if I know that these have to be true, and I can see the first one's already satisfied, what does my height have to be so that the end, my area is one? Well, sure. Um, from zero to five, that length is five. So five times something has to be equal to one. And of course, this would have to be a fifth. Okay, so here's what they want to know. They want to know what is the probability if you were to pick a value between zero and five that it is greater than two. Okay, now two, I'm just going to have to guess here, it is about right here. Okay, and if I say greater than two, that is everything that you see to the right. Okay. And so what you're basically doing is you're finding the area of this rectangle. All right. And so that's not a hard area to find. That is this distance here. And if I go from two and count all the way to five, well, you can just count those units. That's three. I'll put big three right there. Times a fifth is three fifths. If I were to say less than three or equal to three, well, here's three, if I can get this to show up. Anything less than that is to the left. And again, um, that distance from zero to three is three. Times the height of a fifth is again, three fifths. Okay, now, something I want you to take notice of is that here, Okay, you don't have a little bar underneath it. It's just a, a greater than sign. And this has a less than or equal to sign. Know that this little bar underneath is not significant when finding an answer. Okay, and the reason why is there's an infinite amount of values between zero and five. The fact that I'm including one additional value amongst that incredible amount of values um, is not gonna change. Okay, it's not going to be a significant um, adjustment to your data. Okay. Now, let me erase the stuff so that I can do more math. Now I could have cut that. We'll do blue. Right blue. Okay, so from 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is about right here. And four is right there. I will shade all of that. And so four minus a half, there we go, is um, 3.5. And if you multiply that by a fifth, well, I think you're going to get 0.7. Okay, 3.5 times a fifth. I like the next one because it says x is less than 6. Notice that 6 is over here. What's less than 6? Well, anything that you would have like this. And if you ask yourself, how much of your shaded area is represented by this or within this um, or how much of this uh, this rectangle from zero to five is included in this uh, blue shaded area the whole thing is all right it's uh when you say less than six zero to five is included within that okay so this will be of course 100 percent okay all right finally and again, I'm going to erase this just so it looks a little nicer. 
You notice this last one is not an inequality. Okay, it's just 2.3. Maybe that's right there. Okay, and what is the area um, within this line that has no shading? Well, there, there really is no area. Okay, there's no, there's just one boundary and that's it. So um, what do I write for that? I just write um, zero. Okay, so zero is it and we're done. Okay, so you will see those. You may have different shapes. That's a rectangle. You could have some type of, um, I will say a square that has a side of one and, um, around all the edges. You could have other items as well. You have triangles as well, but they'll all be basic fundamental um, shapes. Uh, rectangle, square, maybe a triangle. Okay. Could be a trapezoid. All right, here's the last thing. And this is where your um, normal distribution table comes into play, all right? And you know that because in this problem, it says normal, okay? But Freddy Steak Burgers are um, one of the more popular places at in our state. And with each uh, transaction that happens, uh, their employees can earn tips. And one of the reasons why sometimes they get great tips is because Noah and Jack, who are students in my class, have this tip jar, tip jar and they are super great, great workers, super great cooks, and their, their tip jar just loads up, okay? In fact, on average, okay, for a, a, full, a full shift, six hours, um, their average is $112.54, okay, with a standard deviation of 10.21. Okay, now, here's what we're assuming. Assuming that the distribution of tip, trip, tip, excuse me, is approximately normal. So I'll draw my normal distribution there. Okay. What is the probability that on any one night, they earn $120 in tips or more. Okay, now, I'm a visual person that I like to draw. In the mean, I will draw right down my normal distribution is the middle. And I will label that with my mu. Okay, and my standard deviation, if I go in each direction, is 10.21. So if I add 10.21 here, that is 122.75. Okay, so they kind of like that. They like the mean down the middle, and they want you to go one standard deviation in either direction. And because, I don't know, I just want to keep this neat and clean, I'm just going to go to the right one. And just again, make sure I got that right. That does look good. Okay. I'm also going to label the cutoff of 112.54, which is, sorry, $120, which is right about here. Because that's what they're asking about. 120 is about right there. I'm going to label that too. And if I say or more, I'm going to shade to the right. Okay, so that is a sufficient drawing, okay? That kind of helps the representation of my, um, my understanding of the problem of what a mean is, where the standard deviation is located with respect to where the mean is, and where 120 is, that's the item in question. And also important is which way are we shading, okay? So from here, I'm gonna do a z-score. Okay, and it's gonna be the item in question here that I'm asking about. And what I wanna know is what is the probability that we will have an X value? And let's define X as the number of tips. Okay, at Freddy's for a night. Okay, the probability that X gives you a value of 120 or more. Okay, so the 120 will go there. Your average of 112.54 will go behind it. And then we'll divide by 10.21. Okay, so you can put that in your calculator. Hopefully that makes sense. Remember that your, your mean goes in the back and your standard deviation goes in the bottom. As we look at this, 
Okay, and you don't have to write this. In fact, I usually tell students not to write it, but that's what we're looking at. Okay, but again, you do not have to write it. In fact, I almost, again, encourage people not to just because if you mess up on it, you put like an X bar here on accident or you put like a little S there because sometimes we represent our data each of those ways. Um, it will mark your piece wrong. Okay, so avoid that, but just in our own kind of small talk right here, that's what it means. All right, so after you put those numbers in, um, you get, I have this written down, 0.4739. No. Where are we at? I thought I had it written down. Let me put it in right now. 120 minus 112.4. 120 minus 112.54 divided by 10.21. Okay, if I did my math right, I got 0 0.73. So 0 0.7306. Okay, now if you look this up on your chart, Okay, your normal distribution table. Um, and I will do something similar, actually on a graphing calculator, find the answer, but you look that up. Um, know that you'll have to subtract that from one when you look this part up on your graphing calculator. In the, sorry, look that up on your table, okay? But in the end, you should get, Uh, let's see. 0.2325. And actually, I had that written down. 0.2325. And that's after you do that subtracting. Okay, so something close to that. And again, what does that mean? Okay, well, based off these numbers of what they typically make on average uh, for tips in an evening, uh, the probability that they would actually make $120 in tips or more is 23.25%, all right? So again, this is normal distribution table if you have one. Okay, and remember, once you look that up, you have to subtract from one because they're gonna give you this item off to the, the left here, okay? And then you subtract the item from one, whatever that is, that four digit number, to so find this shaded area to the right. Okay, that is your assignments. Okay, sorry I got a little choppy at the end. It's late in the evening and I've been talking for a lot, so, talking for a while, and so my voice got a little tired. So if you have any questions, let me know, and we'll talk to you again soon.